Are you cooking them beans in there or what? Well, I can't smell that. Welcome to your doom. Shut it and get up here. <laughs> Massive up the court. Hmm, okay. Hello, and welcome to the Jab Jab Show. Uh, my name is on the title just then. I don't know why I said I'll look over my shoulder. Anyway, um, tonight's episode, I'll be ish- I'll be reviewing Central Intelligence. Now, Central Intelligence, if you like, Central Intelligence was written, was directed by Roston Marshall Thurber. And uh, it stars Dwayne Rock Johnson as Bob Stone, or is he? And Kevin Hart as... Um, Calvin Joyner. Okay, so the film opens up 20 years ago, back in 96. Uh, There's like an American high school senior award ceremony, I think it is. Um, and, you know, it's an American thing, and I'm not too aware. Not so well, up on all that stuff. But base, but anyway, um, Calvin Joyner is um, like uh, established as a public, popular kid. He's a high achiever. He's uh, He's most likely to succeed and everyone likes him and all that's really very popular okay and he's giving us giving a little speech out to all the uh, other students and what have you um we also it also establishes the rock character bob stone is like basically the complete opposite he's a bit of a he's, he's basically a fat kid he's unpopular he's a bit nerdy he's singing in the shower um and he he gets humiliated um uh, and during his humiliation he's um He's brought out into, back into the auditorium, and there's a connection basically between the two characters, uh, Calvin Joyner and Bob Stone. Um, so it establishes a little bit there, and then we cut forward to the present day. Uh, Bob uh, Calvin Joyner is now an accountant. He's a little, un- he's he feels a little un- unfulfilled in life. He, you know, he's always married his child of sweeter and all the rest of it. He's just, Feels a little frustrated with how things have gone in the past twenty years and so on, um, and then there's a like a chance meeting between him and the the rocks and Bob Stone, and hilarity and hijinks ensue. Now, when I first saw this trailer, um, I thought, mm, okay, it looks just like a generic comedy where the, their central their idea their thing their joke in this film is they've made the rock fat. Okay, that's their joke, you know. It's like say American Pie for whatever it's whatever it's done and so on. People think you know it's just it, you know. He's got a bit where he fucks up pie. To be honest, I'm a little, you no, know, pleasantly surprised they don't really hammer it in to that. I mean, it's it's the first five or ten minutes of this film back in '96 where the show is, you know, the fat rock basically, um, <clears throat> and he's not, there's like one shot. Like later on in the film, it's, it goes to the present day and it stays for the day. It's not like a, a Doctor Who episode or anything. It stays in the present day and it does show a little reflection of the Rock's older character, younger character, if, if you will. Um, and that's all they do. So they really don't overdo this. So this film is basically an action comedy. And for what the film is, um, I'd say basically the Rock is the best thing of, about this film. It shows, it shows a lot of range, you know based you know based on a lot of things he does in this film um and um he keeps it keeps you guessing throughout the film you know uh that there's you know you, you, when i meet in the present day I mean, again there's a little reunion thing going uh you know a little drinking session and all that you, you, you don't really get to know him for you know until later on in the film he's like he's like, he's like a big man child a big just overgrown a fat boy when you fir- when you first meet him in the present day. Them's good acting by the rock, um, and he has a lot of good chemistry with Kevin Hart. You can tell they had a lot of fun making this film. It shows in the credit sequence that during the credit sequence, a little like you know, like when they messed up lines and all the rest. Of it. You know, having good fun. I mean, I mean, hands up, who dislikes the rock? That's what I thought. No one. Everyone likes The Rock. You know, he's a lot to like there, isn't he? Um, he's got a bag of the charisma and so on. Um, he's a charisma machine. Um, I think Kevin Hart in this film, I've seen him in a few things, he's mostly okay. It's just, I'm not a fan of when he or other people in other films and so on. There's times where there's certain sequences where he's just going on and on and on with his joke, with his... I don't, I don't really call it shtick, it's just 
what he does sometimes. I don't know. Um, I'm not a fan of it where he just labours points, labours jokes. It doesn't make them... It makes him less funny kind of thing. He's just throwing stuff at the screen. And for me, anyway, not a lot of it is sticking. But, you know, he's, like I say, he's, he's mainly okay. Uh, what makes a film, what is the best thing about the film for me is The Rock. And, you know, and like I say, he's got, he, he does a lot of a lot of things within this film. Um, obviously, the, you know, I think in his contract, he must, uh, whenever he's starting a film, okay, like, like uh, clause number one, must lay the smack down. So this is ticked. This is ticked in every, pretty much every film he's been in. Um, you know, he has to crack some heads, and he, and he does, but there's also little moments. And it's a, it kind of didn't surprise me as much, because I've seen a film he was in a few years ago called Southland Tales, and if you don't know that The Rock's in that, and he did show he's not just some guy just to, just to like, you know, like a people's elbow. So The Rock and Kevin Hart in this film remind me a little like um, Chris Tucker and... Jackie Chan in the Rush Hour films, you know, they're, they're kind of like pairing up and what have you, you know, because they go into this miss- mission and what have you. Um, and what, when we find out more about who The Rock is and what he's capable of, um, there's a lot of crosses and double crosses and who's lying and who's doing this and who's doing that and so on, which I didn't mind, you know, um, for, for for the film. It didn't really, it didn't complicate me at all. It was like, I don't find it. I found it easy to follow, and because they posed a few th- few few questions, and the answers, the setups and payoffs, it all worked out well. And there's there's not really much uh, in the way of clumsy exposition or something with the story. You know, it's fairly fairly standard, straightforward, I should say. Um, the only thing I would say is that there's a character near the end of the film where. He just just goes back into he goes into kind of a bond mil, gone, a bond villain mode where you know he's just instead of murdering our hero he's he's uh, you know explaining his motivations and you know what he's gonna do and how he's gonna do it and so forth. I felt a little, that was a little little odd. This film also threw me off a couple of times but in a good way. It wrong forward me. Um, there's, the, you know, there's, there's times when, when you get to know who the, what the rock can do and so on. You know, he he, sh- he shows up in these these odd, odd situations and there's times when they also have have him being there in, in one part of the scene and there in the other. It's a bit like uh, you see that Nightmare on Street films where you got Freddy Krueger there. This is Freddy Krueger, and this is someone running away from him. So Freddy Krueger's there. Oh, Freddy Krueger's on. Turns around. Oh, where's he gone? He's behind you. Ah! See? How's that happen? You know, there's times in this when the rock is doing that kind of thing, obviously, about the, um, you know, the, the uh, whole gloves thing. Um, he's not Freddy Krueger. What I'm saying is that they, 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 they did this a few times, and I didn't I didn't, I didn't find it annoying as such. Um, they didn't overdo it, basically. Um, there's also a couple of good cameos in this. He uses cameos. It could have easily been one of them films where they're just throwing people in. Uh, have we got Free Afternoon? Uh, I don't know. Mel Gibson. Or we've got Free Afternoon. I don't know. Tony Blair. Oh, a bit of politics there. Uh, you know, come d- come down and, you know, just be in our film. It'll be ace. Now, there's not... There's not... There's not, none of that, really, which is, which is good. There's also some good references to the film uh, Sixteen Candles. So, if you're a fan of that film, um, you know... You mean look? Having said all that, um, the, the the film's basically an action comedy. Uh, the action is okay. I mean, The Rock like does know how to hit people, and there's a few little chases and you know little skirmishes and what have you. There's also a, uh, like a standoff in a um, car park fairly late on into the film, where it's like kind of I am Spartacus moment where you know there's a. You know, there's a there's a code name and I said no I'm this person no I'm this person no I, I just, it reminds me of Spartacus whether it was intentional by the filmmakers I'm not too sure um, so you know the action like I say is okay the comedy um, apart from say what I said about Kevin Kevin Hart like Kevin Smith Kevin Hart um, you know it's just I found I found him a bit labouring some of the jokes and so on. He's usually okay. It's it's pretty good, I suppose. It's a little hit and miss now and again. Um, but the best thing of it basically is to rock. He elevates this film just above average, I think. It's easy to watch this film. So them's my opinions. What's yours?
like, subscribe, comment down there. I'm not talking about a rude bit, I'm talking down about the comment section. Okay, like, subscribe, and tell your friends and everything. And in the words of the new Cyrus, send the word. Nine, eight, seven, seven, six, one, ah, ah.